Uh, greetings of the World Teachers Day. Today is really a very auspicious occasion for all of us. So, you know, uh, there are crores of people around the world. Uh, they basically start the process learning. In this learning process, we find uh, the people, those who guide us, those who teach us, some specific things to lead our path. So they are basically the teachers. And uh, you know that uh, every month, 5th September, we celebrate the Teacher's Day. But there is also another day celebrated for the world uh, teachers around the world. So today is uh, World Teacher's Day. And we are celebrating the legacy of the teachers around the world and what is their contributions and uh, how they bring such sustainable and dynamic measures to the society and the communities. With just a small vision, we have started this initiative. And uh, yeah, this is a good beginning, actually, I can say. And uh, we have eminent scholars with us. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, so <clears throat> you see, today, basically, when we talk about World Teachers Day, and uh, the theme for this year is valuing teachers' voices towards a new social contract for education, views from India. So this is basically one uh, important subject needs to be addressed and it needs to be experimented also. How we see the contribution of the teachers, how we recognize their values and how we recognize their contribution for creating a sustainable society as well as creating a sustainable life for millions of uh, souls around the world. So it is really a matter of great pleasure for us today. This event is being jointly organized by uh, two of the most prominent institutions, uh, Sri Balaji Vidyapit and uh, Pondicherry University. So this is basically a joint an initiative between these three institutions and I welcome the Lord and speakers of today's uh, gathering. And also I welcome all the participants, those who have joined from different institutions. And uh, I welcome all of you from on behalf of Sri the Society and Sri Balaji Vidyapit and Pondicherry University. Today we have uh, eminent speakers representing uh, Pondicherry University and uh, Sri Balaji Vidyapit. We have Dr. Val Nehru Subramanian. He is the principal of School of Biomedical Sciences, Sri Balaji Vidyapit. And uh, we have Dr. Matimaran Natarajanji. He is the Deputy Dean International Relations, Associate Professor and Center Head, Center for Sustainability and Climate Studies, Department of Ecology and Environmental Sciences, Pondicherry University. You know, when we talk about this World Teachers Day, that is, uh, you can see this beautiful message is by the leaders, especially it was celebrated by the UNESCO on every 5th October of every year. And it was established in 1966, UNESCO's resolution to establish this global forum, creating a dialogue, especially enriching the noble contributions of the teachers around the world. I'd like to see send the message of the Director General of UNESCO and also Mr. Gilbert, he's the Director General of International Labor Organizations and Ms. Catherine, Executive Director of UNICEF, Mr. Dravid Edwards, General Secretary of the Educational and International mm -hmm. Occasion of World Teachers okay. Day. Yeah. See this beautiful message, this is uh, by empowering teachers to fulfill their roles as transformative intellectuals, and community leaders, we can build resilience and equitable education systems that serves the public good and uplift the communities in which they work. Together, we can create a new social contract for education that truly values and empowers the voices of those who are essential to, it, to its success. I will quote. So this is basically this year's message and the topic they have identified is very innovative actually. And it has its uniqueness when we talk about teachers' voices, especially for creating a social contract. And uh, we have received uh, the response, the enormous support from the esteemed vice censors from the two of the universities. 
the vice chancellor of Pondicherry University has uh, expressed his uh, best wishes for this program and also uh, saying that this is basically a beginning and we will continue these initiatives of, uh, through our collaborative projects and activities. Uh, this is basically our the message from the esteemed and honorable vice chancellor from Sri Balaji Vidyapit. Before we start, I want to read this message. Dear esteemed guests, distinguished speakers and valued participants, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you to the National Symposium on Valuing Teachers' Voices towards a new social contract for education, views from India. This gathering comes at a pivotal moment in our educational landscape where the insights and experiences of teachers are more crucial than ever in shaping a resilient and equitable future of education. As we have gathered here, let us remember the words of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, teaching is a very noble profession that saves the character, the caliber and future of individuals. By valuing the insights of our educators, we can empower them to drive meaningful changes in our classrooms and communities. Teachers are the backbone of our education systems. They inspire, nurture, and empower future generations. Their voices hold the key to unlocking innovative solutions to the changes, to, to the challenges we face in education today. As we embark on this journey, I encourage each of you engaging deeply, share your experiences and collaborate with one another throughout this symposium and thereafter. Together, we can advocate for a new social contract that not only values the voices of teachers, but also empowers them to lead the way in transforming education for the better. In conclusion, let us remember the wisdom of our forefathers be the change that you wish to see in the world. The future of education rests in our collaborative hands, collective hands. Together, let us forge a new path that honors the invaluable contributions of our educators and ensures that every voice is counted in the quest for a brighter future for education in India. Thank you for your commitment to this vital cause. I look forward to the enlightening discussions that will emerge from this symposium and the positive impact they will have on our educational community. This is the message from the Honorable Vice Chancellor from Sri Balaji Vidyapit, Professor Niharanjan Vishwasji. On behalf of the three, three institutions, we pay our respect to the student Vice Chancellor of Pondicherry University, Professor K. Tharini Karasuji, for his best wishes for the program. As well, as well as the innovative message by Professor Niharanjan Vishwasji on this special occasion. So let me introduce these uh, two uh, learned speakers of this today's occasion. Uh, I'll tell you, I have personally interacted with Professor uh, Bal Nehruji and uh, Professor Matimaranji many occasions. Uh, since you know, we are working on the practical as basis, basically transforming the communities. We love to interact with the people, those who are really passionate to do something. And I cannot express my first second meeting with Dr. Bal Nehruji was an enriching experience. You see, Professor Bal Nehru Subramanianji, he is currently the professor of medical biochemistry and the principal of the School of Biochemical Biomedical Sciences, Sri Balaji Vidyapet, deemed to be University Puducherry. He holds the Master's in Science in Medical Biochemistry, Faculty of Medicine from Jipmer, and a PhD in Biochemical Oncology, Faculty of Biomedical Sciences, the Tamil Nadu Dr. MGR Medical University. Sessioned by 36 years of professional experience in the US and other countries, he has been extremely and immensely contributing for the research, innovation, and the administrative things. Dr. Valnir Subramaniam ji has served of the university level in many of the uh, important positions, especially in the capacity of deputy director and the director and CEO of the Center for uh, Nodal Facilities. And also, also principal investigator secured more than 15 crores of rupees getting the funds for the development of research and innovations in collaboration with his university and many other things. Dr. Valaneru Subramaniam has also acquired valuable knowledge and expertise by serving in universities level decision makings and his enriching 
the community through his wider level of experiences. And very soon they are going to start the Center for Indian Knowledge Systems, which Professor Bal Nehru will be sharing his experiences on that. I welcome Dr. Bal Nehru Subramanianji for this today's uh, discussion. We have also Professor uh, Dr. Matimaran Natarajanji. I have two uh, regards for me, him. I The first one, I regard him as just like my elder brother. The second is uh, one that is uh, one teaching or administrative things. I can't express what kind of things he has brought to this land, actually. You see, he's basically uh, in a PhD in natural sciences of the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, Zurich, Switzerland, and did his postdoctoral studies a fellow at the University of Basel, Switzerland. He worked as a senior scientist at the Research Institute of Organic Agriculture from the same institute that is the Phoebe from the Switzerland. During his career in Switzerland as a postdoctoral fellow, senior scientist and co-principal investigators of many of the Indo-Swiss research projects, and he has been immensely contribute for the education, the research and development things particularly organized by the Indian Embassy in uh, Bern. So after serving eight, 18 years of his extensive services to the foreign communities, he uh, returned to India and joined the MS Swaminathan Research Foundation. And uh, currently, he is the Associate Professor at the School of Environmental Ecology and Environmental Sciences, and also the Deputy Dean of International Relations. He has his interest basically in uh, research areas, including agroecology, agroforestry, and other sectors. Currently, he is the Indian principal investigator and coordinator of a multi-institutional and multidisciplinary Indo-Swiss research projects. And under his uh, dynamic coordination uh, and with the support from the student vice chancellor of Pontchart University, he is trying to bring some good projects, research projects, so that we can have innovative research community engagement, and the things can be established in more manner. He's going to talk about the sustainability in education, teachers as a catalyst for transforming learning. I just uh, introduced two lines for me. I am part of Sri Societies as member secretary of Sri Societies initiative that is Oro Bharti. As all of you know that Sri Society is basically uh, registered as a research, in, uh, is basically a society's registration arc. And we have also the affiliation to the scientific and industrial research organization that is zero under the Ministry of Science and Technology. I have a little bit of work experience in my connection with the Ministry of Culture, Government of Institutions under the Ministry of Culture. So I have served the government sector more than 15 years, contributing the major projects, including the policy, cross-cultural policies, uh, cross culture debates also, the diversity of cultural expressions. And I was also part of the International Committee for Nomination of Yoga as Intangible Cultural Heritage of Humanity. And in Pondicherry, we are basically working institutional networking, the research projects, and creating, especially empowering the communities through our research and program activities. And uh, I'll a little bit add something on the integral education point something when we talk about the social contract of education. So this is basically a small background of this today's event. And uh, and I hope this is a good beginning actually, because we have the official MOU with Pondicherry University and Shivalaji Vidyapit. And uh, more specifically, we are working on the program programs, but we have now started our conversations, dialogues, how we can create such good research projects so that we can engage the research scholars, we can contribute something to this uh, community. So this is basically the hope, a small idea came to our mind and we had interacted with these uh, eminent speakers and today is the outcome of this project. So when we talk about the teacher's contribution, especially valuing teachers' voices towards a new social contract, this is a very important topic. Before I say something, we would like to listen to the esteemed speakers first, then I will add something to this in, in the view of, the view of integral education. I just want to tell one line here. You see the first line, what Srivindu has mentioned, a new spirit of oneness will take hold of the human race. And in this process, we see 
the immense contributions of the teachers and teach when when we see and when you say the teachers it's not like the teachers those who taught us in the kindergartens or in the schools or in the colleges or the universities but also the contribution of parent, our parents because the first teachers those who taught something it is not like that whatever we study in the institutions but also it is just like whatever we learned through the each and every moment of our life so I, so I welcome all the learning participants representing various institutions. I welcome you all for this today's session. And uh, I request, uh, we can start with Professor Val Nehruji. He's the, uh, to kindly present his views on this important topic. And uh, yes, now the floor is yours, Dr. Val Nehruji. Thank you, welcome. Uh, good to see Dr. Madhimar and back again on the platform here. And um, a lot of my students and faculty are also joined. Um, so this will be a good platform. But before we go into that, I must appreciate Dr. Kishore Tripathi for this wonderful platform. And this is a very good initiative, very good initiative, very good subject, a good concept, much needed essence of today in the field of education. So I hope you will engage me in the days to come more deeply into the subject. And, I shall come soon. and um, see, uh, recently a friend of mine told me, Bala, you are a researcher, lifelong you have been a researcher and how can you be a, a teacher? You know, I told him, uh, okay, yeah, I was a researcher, but uh, I've been teaching to my own self the entire life. I had been learning the entire life. And who taught me? It is my experiences that taught me how I should live my life. So my focus of today's talk is going to be on experiential learning and how uh, one is shaped up in this society by his or her own experiences. And I like to borrow a um, few words from that Madhimaran's title. This is where the teachers will be a catalyst. Okay, so with that little introduction, I think uh, I'm going to share my slides. And if there's a problem during my presentation, uh, please uh, let me know. Okay, um, my topic for today is uh, value education and uh, I'm going to talk about this approach because this is purely based on the experience that we have gained from the stakeholders and it worked out well for us and so I call it a rational approach because it is very practical and it shows results right there. You know, you don't have to wait for a long time. And I'm uh, making this presentation as part of uh, and the IKS Sera, the Indian Knowledge System uh, Science Education Research Academy that Dr. Tripathi was mentioning about that we have recently started at Sri Palaji Vidyapit. Now, uh, I'm going to define uh, my perspective of how education uh, should be looked at. Education should be looked at as something that is responsible for creating good citizens to this society. Degrees come next. Degrees and awards come next. They should be responsible for it. And that is the motive that we have taken uh, at the School of Biomedical Sciences in the IKS era to train students uh, to become responsible citizens. You know, during my counseling sessions, uh, admission counseling, I talk to students, I talk to their parents, and I assure them that I will bring them out as responsible citizens first. And uh, the education on their degree comes next. To me, a degree in any particular subject is a gate pass or a passport to enter the world of competitions. Otherwise, uh, if they are good citizens, responsible citizens, they'll do well in their life. And what education has to teach over the core values and principles that uh, uh, an individual gains to uphold uh, the well-being of the self, the, the one who is learning, 
and in turn, he goes out and helps out the society and collectively that adds value to the nation and directly to the whole world. And we end up with the individual himself immersing himself or herself with this universe. Ultimately, we all come from the universe and go back to the universe. And how we came out, how we go back, it's all based on how good we are as a citizen and how well education has trained us, uh, given us the experience to become a good citizen. So I, we believe um, that uh, the education uh, should help individuals um, uh, gain a holistic development. It should provide a holistic development of individuals, by which I mean three basic imprints, qualities, skills, and experience. These are very essential for an individual uh, to gain as a part of the holistic uh, development um, from the education uh, to become a good, good citizen. You know, this brings an individual to become a good citizen. And um, when we saw well-practiced, this concept of bringing out responsible citizens where it was well-practiced, established, and time-tested was in our ancient Gurukul education. Okay, then this, there was uh, no syllabus defined, no board of studies, no academic council. Uh, nobody came out and said uh, the chapter one, chapter two, but it was all building qualities, skills, and experience of an individual. Okay, so this education is um, an essence of creating global responsible citizens. And that is something today in this platform I would like to put forth to the um, to the audience, consider this concept of gurukul education. We need not create residential educational systems. The teacher should reside in the minds of the student. The teacher should reside in the minds of the student, and that is the modern gurukul that I am proposing. You know, um, not the residential uh, education. Uh, in some places, that are given to students. And uh, the outcome of the Gurukul education that I believe uh, are threefold. One is it instills more values in the minds of the people, the students, the seekers, the learners, creates strong ethics, and gives these two qualities, they give a sense of community imprinted on the minds of the learners. Okay, and all these three together will bring a learner to contribute to shaping the society and the culture. Isn't this what we need today? We need every learner to come together in shaping the society and the culture, and they should be good citizens. And this is exactly is the need of the power and again, we thank Dr. Tepadi for providing this platform to express this view here. Okay, now, here I like to take a, a little bit deviation and I like to quote uh, Dronacharya here. You know, Dronacharya, where the teacher comes into play. Dronacharya was the preceptor, teacher to the Pandavas and the Gauravas. Okay. He taught them good. He taught them whatever he knew. But people took and understood, developed a sense of community differently. The Pandavas took it differently. The Gauravas took it differently. Among the Pandavas, the skills were strongly picked up by Arjuna. Okay, so what the message that I like to bring out here is the teacher has stands on a common platform to share his experience and knowledge. And this the learner, I would call a student, anyone is a learner, the learner should be open to accept the teacher's purviews 
integrate into his mindset and understand the concept and emerge out in contributing to shaping the society and the culture. So, uh, no, uh, the, the previous slide I, I, slide I conclude, the responsibility uh, of a learner is more than a teacher uh, quoting that Pandava Guru was learning curve. Okay, so with a basic introduction to that Gurukul education and its impact on the society, what modern education needs today, you know, I'm in a medical campus where uh, the teaching and learning is more curriculum driven and um, what is missing, if not missing, what is less and what should receive no focus are three things. Experiential learning, of course, this is widely talked about now in modern education, but uh, how far it has gone should be revisited and it should be translated so that the individual turns out to be a good citizen, okay? And personalized mentorship is the second one. Mentorship uh, is a word that I always mix up with preceptorship, okay? I went into Google and I wanted to know what is preceptorship and what's the difference between mentorship and preceptorship. And uh, going back to the example thrown out, uh, Wikipedia said Drone was a preceptor. He was a preceptor to Pandavas and Gauravas. What the difference is, converting theoretical knowledge to practical skills. The one who provides training to that particular aspect is a preceptor. Mentor gives you new knowledge, helps you to think differently, go deep in understand the problem, problem solving, critical thinking, deep thinking. These are the trends of the educational system and the need of the hour in the future. The industry is moving towards these three thinking concepts, deep thinking, critical thinking, and relative thinking. How good an individual is on these three is going to help him become a good citizen and contribute to shaping the society. Okay, so these two are very essential that we need to focus today and students should have an open mind to accept these concepts when provided to them by the institutions or the authorities, educational authorities and the teacher. In order to accept that, what is more important, number three is more important than number one and two. Trust between a student and a teacher. There should be a strong bondage pointed between the teacher and the student. If there is no trust between the teacher and the student, learning becomes minimum. Learning becomes very minimum. Maybe a student is working for his degree or maybe a teacher is teaching to complete the syllabus. And that is not going to add value to the education. Okay, because that is not holistic development. So with that, uh, myself, we started the uh, uh, new initiative, School of Biomedics, uh, Biomedical Sciences, um, I have a, um, a wonderful faculty working with me, Dr. Ratnagala Mugam. Uh, he is, uh, is an alumni of Pondicherry University, so Pondicherry University takes a credit. And uh, he's a wonderful coach that I work with. And um, we took a lot of breaks from him. And uh, we said, uh, before we start serving the students in the field of biomedical sciences, why don't we understand the mindset of the society, the stakeholders? the parents, the teachers, the students. So we created, we carved an opportunity and organized our National Science Day. For the last two years, we have been doing this National Science Day and we reached out to uh, most schools in and around Pondicherry and Tamil Nadu uh, districts. 
They have had uh, wonderful uh, uh, participation and experience interacting with students. We, uh, we organize competitions where students express those ideas, their ideas, and the focus of these competitions and interactions was on the sustainable development goals, the second team sustainable development goals. That was the theme that we took for the last two years to approach the school children and the teachers. What their thoughts are about these 17 goals. Because we believe these 17 goals directly or indirectly, if a student or a teacher or a citizen understands these 17 goals, and wants to contribute, definitely and definitely his education has given him of his development. Okay, with that concept, we have a wonderful for the last years, and the outcome of the we took a lot of feedbacks from these students and parents and teachers, and out of that, we have called out 16 value education courses at uh, the School of Biomedical Sciences at Sri Balaji Vidyapi. These courses uh, are, are run through uh, 30 days, one full month. And we focus on, uh, during this period, we don't teach the students uh, any curriculum-based subject. But uh, this one full month is spent on proving the students to become a good student, a learner, and eventually a citizen. So it will be a holistic uh, development of an individual during this one month. So we have started this and it works very well for us. And um, our students, I told my students, at the School of Biomedical Sciences, you will learn, we will teach you only 50% of what is in your curriculum. 25% you go out and you learn all of your experience. And the remaining 25%, the life will teach you. And that 25 later, the last 25% goes on through the life. Okay. But I told them the remaining 50% of the time, we will teach you, we will give you holistic. And I assure the parents. Your ward will be a good citizen when he or she walks out of our School of Biomedical Sciences. That is the assurance that I have given. And some of my students are here online, and I am submitting a request again to them, hold on to your spirit and become a good citizen out of School of Biomedical Sciences from Sri Balaji Vidyapit. And um, this is a small value addition that, as a teacher, Myself and Dr. Ratsanagar, we bring out to this society because both of us, we strongly believe knowledge is critical in holistic development. Every teacher should get involved in knowledge transfer, not just complete the curriculum. Okay. And these 16 uh, courses uh, classes are activity based, not teacher centric, it is more student centric. And we follow the flipped classroom uh, type of teaching uh, these concepts to the students. And with that uh, uh, little introduction, I have uh, taken feedbacks. We, we take feedbacks from students to refine ourselves because teacher is always not right. So we need to refine ourselves and we do that quite often. And we take feedbacks and I like to share. Um, there are lots of feedbacks, but I like to share two so that you hear from the uh, students who have uh, gone through these courses and what they say about this. Let me share this. Hello, everyone. My name is Alvin Thomas, and I'm a student of the School of Biomedical Sciences at SBB Pundicherry. We began our orientation in August, and the course officially commenced in September. During this time, our department introduced us to important topics such as social interaction, or values, Professional ethics, mindfulness, and decision making, encouraging us to interact. The discussions around the social interactions emphasize the importance of building relationships, teamwork, and the communication skills, which are essential for both academic success and future careers. In exploring moral values and the professional ethics, 
our faculty encourage us to develop a strong sense of integrity and responsibility. They emphasize the importance of ethical behavior in our future professions and how it shapes our character and reputation. This foundation will help us to navigate complex situation, situations we may face in our careers. Their support empowered us to think critically from different perspectives and find solutions to complex problems. The encouragements we received from them helped our self-confidence, instilling the belief that we could overcome any obstacle and succeed in our efforts. The insights and perspectives we gained during the orientation continued to evolve as the poll progressed in September. Our faculty members shared their views on various topics, helping us approach challenges from multiple angles. Their guidance not only helped us to manage our academic responsibilities, but also allowed us to enhance our skills and abilities. This enabled us to actively participate in discussions, group work, and other class activities with ease and enthusiasm. This, the faculty's constant encouragement has helped us and utilize our potential to the fullest, pushing us to become better versions of ourselves. Hello everyone, my name is Lakshna. I am BSc on student of biomedical science at BV Puducherry. Our classes commenced in August for a month before starting the course. We had orientation classes during this time. Our department introduced as to important such as gender equality, leadership and communication encouraging as to engage and interact. As hostelers living away from the home can be challenging experience. But the guidance provided by our faculty during the orientation helped us to adapt to this new environment. Through various sessions and open discussion, uh, they equip us with the skills to communicate effectively uh, with our peers and overcome by initial feelings of isolation. These sessions fostered interaction among students, breaking down barriers that often exist for new joiners, especially those days as staying in the hostels thanks to the faculty's efforts. The sense of community we, are, we have developed has made hostel life smoother and more enjoyable. The insights and perspective we gained throughout the orientation have uh, continued in the develop as the course for our progress in September. Our faculty and our members shared their views on the topics, helping us approach them from different angles. This support has also been valuable in helping us manage, manage the balance between academic responsibility and independence of uh, living in the hostel. Thank you. I, I like to I like to hold on to the other two videos for the uh, for the sense of time here, and um, see bottom line. Uh, I'm going to give a conclusion on the this perspective and the experience. the The criteria that we have taken, the endpoints that we have taken as a teacher and a, a learner in our uh, institution is discipline, discipline, discipline. That's all it is. Discipline in all matters, be it your life or be it your learning or be it shaping the society. Be a good citizen. This is the message that we drive to the students. And discipline comes purely, purely out of following, strictly following or adhering to the ethics. The ethics, people talk about um, ethics, manners, uh, etiquettes. And uh, I tell the students, uh, they are more or less the same served on different platter. Okay, but um, listen to your heart, be a good person, be good to others. And uh, that is the bottom line grammar for a good citizen. Okay, so I am very confident all of my students will come out every year, we'll be churning out 20, 30 good citizens into the society, into this world, and they will carry on the legacy of developing many more good citizens and add to this whole universe. With that little confidence and note and the opportunity. Hello, everyone. My name is Alvin Thomas, and I'm a student of the Constant and has helped us and utilized our... And with that uh, conclusion, i like to... Uh, uh, send my uh, thanks to all of you listening to me and special thanks to Sri Aramidho Society, uh, Dr. Kishore Tripathi and Dr. Charu Tripathi and uh, the Sri Balaji Vithyapin for uh, giving me the platform to serve.
in this capacity, the chancellor and the vice chancellor primarily, and the entire Sri Balaji Vidyapit family. You know, we all we all work together. And um, ego is something that uh, we don't encourage in School of Biomedical Sciences. And uh, those three letters are missing in the alphabets. <laughs> so, and um, my uh, last but not the least, my thanks to uh, Dr. Ratsnagar and the students and the teachers and parents in feedback and for all their cooperation and so on. And uh, with that little note, um, I'd like to take apology. Uh, I am not, uh, I'm a very conventional teacher. I'm not used to this kind of sitting in front of people and talking. I move, I move, I interact, I act, I show up. That is missing. <laughs> so my apologies if something was not really clear about, but otherwise, thank you. Thank you everyone for listening to me. Okay. Uh... Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Balhir Subramanian ji, uh, for your uh, kind words, especially presenting the Gurukul system of education and uh, imparting the new ideas, especially in a teaching learning system, how the better platforms can be created for the benefit of the students, particularly. Teachers like you have a different vision. I can understand being a scientist, the visions like is more scientific and addressing the issues in a more sustainable manner and i hope that the way you are imparting the knowledge and you can have i hope you have also many challenges because when we talk about the value the contribution of the teachers to the community they have also many challenges and the innovative thing what you have mentioned you didn't tell anything a single challenge is what you are facing imparting this uh so this is basically the greatness of the teachers actually even if uh, like uh, none of the classes starting from our kindergarten, I have not met a teacher who has told that we have certain challenges while teaching or doing the, all these things. This is your greatness. And uh, thank you so much for your beautiful ideas. We will come up with some discussions after listening to Mati Maranji and a little bit addition to me. And definitely we'll continue this interview for the, this is the beginning. So thank you, so thank thank you. so much. Now it is the time to listen uh, the eminent scholar from Pondicherry University, as I have introduced him, he has having this national and international exposures, uh, bringing new ideas through his research and program activities. And I request uh, Dr. Matimaran Natarajanji, uh, representing Pondicherry University for this August gathering to share his experiences. Uh, Dr. Matimaranji, please. So thank you, first of all, uh... Uh, Dr. Tripathi and uh, all others for joining this wonderful evening. Uh, I hope I am audible, clear? Yes, yes, yes. yes okay. So it's always been nice to be uh, part of such a you know, uh, group team of audience with uh, mixed students, teachers from different sectors. So, um, well, I enjoyed the uh, uh, and very informative, first of all, I uh, want to tell Balan Nehru the way yeah, we met recently at our university on different contexts, sustainable one health. Uh, just quickly to note with, uh, I, I just, when you, talk, when you told at the end, you used to go around, I still remember the mic in your pocket, very dynamic speech you gave. <laughs> At Pondicherry University, we still remember, and it was very, very thought-provoking. Um, so, from my side for today, uh, I have uh, not a very long um, yes. information. Uh, sorry to sorry to disturb you, Professor Matimaranji. Yeah. Your voice is a little bit uh, uh, yeah, pressing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So yes. maybe uh, I'll share my slide already. Uh, yes. Yes. Please. I think a lot of things have been now. Uh, we saw from the previous speaker about what it means for, uh, you know, what it means basically a teaching and uh, rather in a more, uh, we already saw like what it should be uh, in, especially in the current situation. I still don't know if I can recall that uh, main message from the previous speaker, we saw the, the discipline, you know, that is something um, 
I, I mean, we know that uh, already like characters, you know, if character is lost, everything is lost alive. Of course, there's uh, like something wealth is lost, something is lost. So I think in that context, um, very, very important that discipline and things in the current uh, situation, as we all know that. So uh, now my part of the talk, I just want to bring a little bit how uh, the whole system of sustainability things, how to integrate, how if we can make it as an integral part of uh, education system across you know, various uh, forms. Uh, it can be a uh, research, it can be at a uh, more uh, very basic and, and I think very much it has been already brought it, brought out by uh, Balaneru, uh, Dr. Balaneru uh, in the previous speech, various components of sustainability. Uh, so in that uh, from from the Center for Sustainability and Climate Study at Pondicherry University, uh, which is uh, which is this center particularly was uh, started uh, almost exactly a year back on second of October. Uh, so we completed one year of uh, you know inaugurating the center, uh, and still of course long way to go. Um, we are going to also offer some courses in the coming academic year, forthcoming academic year. So just for information for the students uh, who, are, who have joined this evening for this uh, event. Um, so with a very new center uh, representing and heading the center, um, we, we have planned for a lot of things on working on this sustainability. But uh, for today, I, as we are going uh, we are looking at more on specifically on education as we are we know out of the 17 goals which we also heard from the previous talk um, so goal number four obviously uh, focus on quality education or education itself but uh, as we all know these all these goals are meant not to be independent or Rather, as we know, they are more independent, uh, interdependent, or sometimes very tightly linked. To put it in other words, so uh, quality education, of course, doesn't come, or in general, education, or thing doesn't come, uh, say, very much at the cost of poverty or thing. There are many things challenging this education as a as a whole. So that if we go deeper into uh, that particular topic, education, as we know, uh, as, as also Dr. Tripathi said, um, of course we didn't, we didn't uh, we have, we do have a lot of challenges, that's for sure. But what kind of challenges in the current world facing with so many crises, as you know, like climate, or uh, environmental issues in general. So uh, for me, I just want to bring particularly for students also in general, what kind of things uh, as, a, as a sustainability itself, uh, how it has to be part of now the current education system, right? So before that, for particularly the students who are new to this topic on sustainability or so, particularly if they are coming from different background of uh, not, you know, this word is not uh, actually new in for India or Indian knowledge system, as we already are also, I think if you remember um, this Indian knowledge system way back, hundreds of years back itself, we have been much evolved in offering education system in a very sustainable way. And I think the previous speaker brought it very clearly and also Dr. Tripathi uh, had, had mentioned this, particularly this Gurukul, 
way of teaching is what it means of uh, a way of sustainable education, right? But now we are, in a way, we are revisiting that. Uh, if you see uh, uh, in a more modern way, or rather, rather putting it more uh, organized way of integrating sustainability, right? So in that in that context, integrating sustainability into learning uh, or making them to understand students what it means, uh, definitely as we see that skills uh, uh, related to uh, environmental, social and economic challenges. Okay, so this is something uh, what we need at this current um, uh, context. So, and, and for those who are new uh, to these goals, you know, respective goals and sub goals, specifically goal 4.7, as we know, uh, it emphasizes clearly that all learners acquire knowledge and skills for sustainable development. So, that's kind of now a global approach. And for sure, for Indians, context as we know that's also for today's topic from message from india so what has to be done is this particular knowledge what it means here is we have to focus on indian knowledge system for india and uh, why the reason is as we know the local knowledge system is very very important the local knowledge that means what we know as uh, as uh, what's happening uh, around us, you know, in terms of environmental issue or whatever uh, issues. So the issues are local. Therefore, the knowledge and the science behind it also have to uh, they have to be addressed or have to revolve around these kind of. Um, I'm sure you all would agree with that. So. That's why if you see, um, if you take, for example, now any country working on that uh, sustainable uh, knowledge system or sustainable development, they have to uh, consider what is important for, what kind of knowledge is important for respective country, respective uh, region. And, and so on. So that's because of problem also arises from respect to area and then addressing it. So therefore, as you see the education also, uh, what for teachers uh, at, at the current con context have to focus naturally on, as we know, uh, have to be also adapted to students uh, with a local knowledge system. So uh, to to little bit elaborate on that particularly, so certainly uh, very crucial uh, for the as we know we call we have so many terminologies now overwhelmed with a lot of terminologies like climate crisis and so on or uh, environmental problems uh, and, and it's a multi dimensional as we know so. Uh, Without any science taking into account what it means, uh, sustainable education and how these are interconnected, you know, this is this is going to be uh, a focus. I think uh, the last slide or the the one previous, uh, I think the idea is very clearly reflecting there uh, from the previous speaker. Uh, all these science and disciplines uh, are interconnected and that's something uh, every institution um, should consider. Uh, to my understanding, I think this is quickly evolving uh, also, particularly in India, where we have like even the national education policies now we what we call it NEP as we all know our most teachers we have, we have joined here and of, of course students as well there's a lot of components in NEP as well 
uh, highlighting, putting emphasis on integrating sustainability or environmental uh, to be on particular uh, integrating all disciplines. So you must be knowing uh, that an EP on environmental studies is now mandatory for all disciplines. That means chemistry, physics, everything, all disciplines. So, so such an emphasis is given and in that, of course, uh, a part of it or most part of what it means environmental uh, issues or learning process for every student is uh, naturally what what we have what we have to focus is sustainability or concept of sustainability integrated into that for every student and and um, of course this is going to be a, a new paradigm shift from a regular teaching or regular uh, what we saw for last 70 years, I think this is going to be a transformative learning now in future. <laughs> and naturally, a new way of acquiring knowledge uh, is now uh, need of the hour, how a student and teachers should interact or, or kind of continuous learning and for both teachers and students. So it is now became obviously it's not ideal to have a one way or like that, but rather as, as also previous speaker had highlighted, uh, so both teachers as well as students is going to be a continuous cycle of learning and teaching and exactly how we are going to put it in a, what we call transformative learning is uh, now a, a bigger challenge as well because we need to adapt, we need to evolve, we need to uh, rethink on uh, conventional teaching methods or teaching tools or teaching uh, yeah, uh, ways what we have been doing previously. So uh, uh, kind of this slide shows you a little bit of what it means uh, a smaller approach for transformative learning. So, so as you see here, the place based, what I already referred, like local uh, context, real world examples, it becoming very, very crucial for uh, developing a more resilient society, resilient society for any particular country, any country. That includes for India, particularly with a very diverse uh, culture, as well as very diverse uh, geography and a very diverse uh, issues. So connecting lessons that is very local context and real world issues becoming very, very, very important as we see here in the way forward. And then comes also um, teaching, uh, is not at all complete. It goes with only theoretical. Of course, when we make it more experiential, like we had, uh, as we, most of us know, like a uh, Gurukul system, of course, there's a lot of uh, experience-based teaching. We already have in India in many um, institutions where they focus on more on experimental learning. Uh, so uh, this is not going to be also very new for us, for, for India or as such, because as we know, there are many different types of schools in India. So I don't want to get into more detail of different types. Uh, so we do have this kind of things, of course, uh, in other words, we have it so-called uh, vocational education where it's going with more learning by doing methods. And this is where, as we also know, many of the European countries or other countries from Asia or uh, America, particularly in Europe, as we know, Germany and including Switzerland, a lot of emphasis has been put on vocational training, uh, which means it becomes very, very important on learning by 
uh, doing and very building a sustainable society. So equally important, both science and kind of vocational education for any institution, it's very, very important. And uh, finding a right balance for every country has to be more customized for country specific. So there's no uh, a simple thumb rule to adapt any uh, specific country's practice in my view to adapt it to another country. So India's specific Indian knowledge system is therefore becoming very, very important to also develop curricula for India specific. So, and then comes of course collaborative learning, which means if we all know science or anything is not at all going to be, cannot be done independent. It has to be collaborative. Uh, both research as well as at the global as well as uh, local level. So I think uh, I'm not going to go into the detail of this matrix, but uh, for those who are new for this, uh, particularly students here who have joined from also Pondicherry University, um, from other department, particularly uh, what we call sustainable development matrix. There's a lot of component as we see planet, profit, people, and so on, quality of life. In a way, it's just uh, uh, this matrix, another uh, way of putting different interconnected components like all AR17 SDG uh, goals, as we know from this wheel up here. Uh, this cartoon or this scheme also, as you see, sustainability as such as mainly three pillars, as we see here, environmental, social, economic, and what it means, as we all know already, a uh, lot of interconnectedness uh, among each other, and, and that certainly have to be part of the curriculum in uh, one way or, or another not just only for sustainability uh, education, but also how for other disciplines, including medicine, bio, biomedical, as we know, uh, all any disciplines, which uh, obviously eventually would have some impact on environment or economic aspects. So, so education as, a, as now, is also evolving as we know, multidisciplinary. Uh, almost all um, science are now uh, project, particular research projects, as we know, going with the multidisciplinary uh, component. So, in that, one of the key things, uh, as we know, sustainability is going to be a, a, a major component for future. So this is clear already we have seen like uh, also we know uh, what it means environmental sustainability. I don't want to take much time, but it's rather bringing it uh, in a larger context for next 20, 30 years, particularly very crucial as also as we know for India as a country is very, very, uh, I think few uh, last week or few weeks back, particularly from you and uh, it was made clear that uh, our, our country is very, playing very crucial role for uh, bringing up on climate, addressing climate issues and so on. So that means bringing out, uh, reducing the greenhouse gases and so many things. So everything at the end ends up with how, what kind of responsible living we are going to make it uh, for future generations. So another way we uh, we call it like as we uh, as we know it's called responsible consumption and uh, as sustainability as a component as so many factors as you know uh, our approaches like waste management uh, in in a simpler term we know that it's just. Uh, like reduce or recycle all these uh, terminologies. So I'm not going to go also detail. 
what it means that every science, every form of teaching, if we also could also integrate this uh, component uh, would, would, would make a more uh, resilient community or future for any country. And, uh, I, and there's a big list of things, uh, what kind of components, it's just you can uh, have a, uh, go through three, I'm not going to go into details of each, but it's, as you see, there's so many components integrated of how we're going to impart these in terms of both um, also behavioral aspects. Um, that means students, how they are going to um, be engaged in terms of their uh, ability to understand these concepts, right? All right, so uh, also what and this term of social innovation also is not new. It's just uh, what we had uh, way back in, if you see, there are a lot of uh, integral factors we had in India of so-called social innovation. It's a new, uh, maybe uh, reworded in a new way. But what it means is, a community thinking or eco-focused social innovations means innovation doesn't have to be what we call now innovation in science and technology doesn't have to stay there only, but also we have so much component of what we call social innovation. Innovation in social uh, sector is much more, uh, more advanced way of thinking we need. Uh, that's also what we know uh, is also more challenging uh, for future because of because uh, as we know the AI or artificial intelligence emerging or uh, developing so much faster. Uh, I think most of you might have also heard that uh, already or uh, we are also looking at factors where AI would not able to replace immediately humans is one sector is social. And that's social innovation becoming more uh, important as uh, in the form of teaching uh, where the AI things may aid or support us. But the complex thinking of teacher or social interaction is not just cannot be easily at the moment, as we all know, have seen that uh, AI, is, AI is not going to uh, replace this sector particularly. So social innovation or in, in other words, teaching itself is not going to be sooner challenged. Teaching maybe can be partly uh, worked out with uh, more uh, AI supported, but what we call it as um, holistic approach from the previous speaker, holistic approach of teaching is not going to be definitively a part of AI in the near in the future. Uh, I think, I hope most of you would agree with that. So this is social sustainability components, uh, which I have also previously mentioned uh, back. Uh, so a lot of things are happening in the in this sector of social innovation. Uh, we all know so many different components like NGOs, charities, uh, educators come into under one roof. And that's a lot of things. Uh, so much of integrated approach is needed for bringing out uh, transformation in society, be it at local or at national level. So this is something also uh, what would uh, could be a major component for uh, new uh, new age teaching. So, and that's a little bit of scheme, what it means, uh, social innovation and environment integration. So obviously it's clear from the slide, uh, different components uh, we have to have. Uh, integrate local communities, stakeholders from different sites, and, and of course, sustainability education and so on. So again, uh, very clear. And, and of course, uh, all these 
are very important in terms of, as we know, uh, a country or anything is more resilient, sustainable, when economically they are sustainable. And we know that particularly from many countries and including ours, uh, with the current situation of so much of uh, issues ongoing globally, as we know, a crisis in Middle East and so on, the economic sustainability is also becoming very, very important for a more stable uh, life, a stable form of uh, even including education. Uh, so that's also uh, important criteria what I think should be considered in part of sustainable way of uh, teaching learning process. So there are so many ways to do that as we see in the slide, nature-based solutions. Uh, or the, I'm not going to also in detail of that. And community engagement and so on. And there's a big way of approaches to do this. Uh, I just limit to that because of lack of time we have. I think soon uh, we have to wind up also. Um, with the time limits. So last but not least, there are a lot of uh, opportunities as well as challenges, as you see. And there's uh, certainly uh, there are a lot of uh, call for action needed, both from educators at different levels, from schools to higher education on this context, to bring out uh, many components, including the ongoing climate crisis. Um, so just uh, want to uh, end up with a great thank you for the opportunity given to me, first of all, to, to the organizers and specifically Dr. Tripathi um, and the organization Sri Arbindo Society and, and, uh, and the team involved in organizing such a wonderful symposia, uh, online symposia for today. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Matimaran Natarajanji, presenting your beautiful ideas, especially this uh, sustainable education systems with reference to the SDGs, and also adding to the ideas how the sustainable education systems can solve many of the challenges which is happening around the world. Yeah, it is a wonderful presentation, actually. And it shows what kind of international exposure you have you are pre presenting this. So we can have a discussion on this. And uh, it, it is really a matter of great pleasure that the esteemed Vice Chancellor of Sri Walaji Vidyapit, uh, Professor Nihar Vishwasji, he has spared his valuable time for this uh, event. And also, uh, thank you so much, sir, for your beautiful message. And it was really highly enriching. And it has given an extra boost to this today's discussion. And we will continue in that light and adding in something on Sri Windows and Mother's Integral Education. We have also eminent uh, participants like Professor uh, Dr. Prabhat Kumar Shuklaji is from the Horticulture Commissioner for the uh, Ministry, uh, Ministry of Agriculture from the Government of India. And we have our Dr. Ramesh Vardiji, he is uh, our Secretary of uh, Sri Aurobindo Bhavan, Bangalore who are con extensively contributing for the development of integral education among the communities. So allow me to add something, whatever little in terms of the integral education, what we are doing and what is our objective. What I feel <clears throat> in a global education system, uh, the things are quite uh, innovative nowadays. I'll refer that when I started my study in a village remote school, we do not have much accessibility to the infrastructures or the um, study materials or the modern technologies. But nowadays things are almost changed. The way we have the modules, we have the innovative teachers and the way this teaching and learning systems are growing on, it has definitely, it has changed the face of the world. So when we talk about this global education systems, especially the contribution of the teachers and as well as the participation of the learners to whom we say as the students, uh, Professor uh, Bal Nehru Shibramanyanji beautifully mentioned about the Gurukul learning systems and the accessibility. 
and Dr. Matimaranji representing the sustainable measures. Uh, let me add something in the view of integral education. Uh, I just want to recall one of the stories which the mother wrote. One day, one uh, disciple, one fellow, he wanted to know something and he came to know there was a priest, there is a teacher. And he went to meet with him and asked, I came to you to learn something. So uh, the guru told, okay, you please, please be in my ashram and uh, then we can start something after a few days. So few days has gone, few months have gone, few years has also gone. It, it approximately crossed some 10 years of time. So the fellow was quite disturbed. This guru is not teaching me anything. I am waiting here since 10 years. So one day his patience was broken and he went to meet with his teacher. He told, I am here since 10 years. So you are not teaching me anything. What I have to do here? So the guru told, I forgot actually, uh, you came here to learn something, but I forgot that what purpose you came. So before we start, I have a friend who is uh, staying nearby the village and tomorrow is his birthday. So I have a gift for him. So can you please give this gift because it is his birthday tomorrow? So the disciple told, yeah, yeah, with a great pleasure, I'll do this. So the guru, the guru gave a gift, small gift box actually. And that fellow uh, taken that gift box and he, when he was moving forward, some quarreling started in his mind. What was inside the box? See, one side, the divine qualities was saying, no, no, you don't think about this. What is there? The guru has given to as a gift to his friend. Why should you think about this? But the another side, the hostile side affected. So, no, no, I should open this. So in this fighting between the divine and hostile forces in thoughts, what happened? The hostile forces captured his mind and he opened the box actually. So when he opened the box, there was something inside the box. And when he opened, it was disappeared. I'll tell you what was that. And his condition was so horrible. He was, he thought, what the hell I have done? So he was neither uh, move forward to meet with his uh, teacher's friend, nor he was going back to. So in this situation, he went to his friend, teacher's friend, and I explained everything what happened with him. And the friend told, your teacher will guide you what you have to do. And you please go back and explain everything to your teacher. Then uh, he returned and explained what happened. So the teacher listened everything and he told, I just gave you a simple task to do. And uh, you know what happened. So, and now, and you are here to learn something about the self-realizations and the knowledge of the soul and how difficult it is. Can you please imagine? So from that day, the disciple started controlling his minds and whatever activities. And after a couple of years, he came back to his teacher and he told, uh, now I have control over my senses and I have little bit experience of the self-knowledge. And the beautiful response was from the teacher, this was the thing I was trying to teach you. So you have experience in such a way. So when we uh, talk about these uh, values of the teachers, not only in the Indian subcontinent, but also the other countries, because as many times I often say, it is basically when people were together, when the concept of civilization was there, and when they came in contact with each other, they forgot how to live in a harmonious way. The fighting was started, it is still going on, and you can refer to the media things, what is happening around the world. So in this way, the small nations where the civilization concept was collapsed and a new nations was brought actually. So it is basically the fragmentation of the human consciousness, not only creating the nations like that. So when we talk about this teaching and learning systems, I'll tell you when I was a little kid, my mother started uh, to teach me with three zeros. The first zero was the Guru Brahma, second was the Guru Vishnu, and third was the Guru Maheshwar actually. So I can't express the way I learned through, so the Upanishad says when we talk about the Gurukul system of learning, and uh, you can say nowadays this Gurukul system of learning is basically 0.1%, which is contributing the total education system. We have, uh, of course, some new 
gurukuls are coming up with new ideas presenting that but when we talk about views from india we have added that tagline to that subtitle to this when we talk about this indic knowledge systems or the learning and teaching systems we have a strong heritage to uh, preserve to protect or the to uh, to pro to pay our homage to the gurus who, who from whom we have learned for example the famous you take the example of the vedic hymns the rishi madhuchandas in the famous rigveda the, the first mantra he refers om agnim mele they are invoking the fire and rishi madhuchandas also referring agnihi purvevi rishi viridya he is referring to the uh, his past uh, seers or the sages and also we have numerous examples you take the example of shrimad bhagavad gita it was a discourse between lord krishna and uh, arjuna's you take the example of this uh, many of the stutis sahasranamas the dialogue between goddess parvati and lord shiva many questionnaires you take the example of the prashna upanishad the six disciples went to meet with their teacher and he they told that we have some questions in our mind so the guru told you please uh, stay in my ashram few days then if i know i will tell you what is the answer to these questions so in such a way this teaching and learning system was developed starting from the vedas to the modern times and we have a strong connections between the tradition of teaching and learning and when we talk about the integral education which was established by shirobindo and the mother and shirobindo in his ideas the national value of education is clearly mentioning what exactly an education means and what is the role of a teacher to promote that i just want to read few pass passages from this in the national value of education shubham rais that the education of a human being should begin at birth and continue throughout his life i repeat once again the education of a human being should begin at birth and continue throughout his life and shubham the also he defines that nothing can be taught because in this process in this teaching and learning process it is basically the soul's journey to explore to experience to live and to enrich the life in a more potential way this is basically the integral education system what shubhendra and the mother has imparted and it is addressing the five fold applications of the human nature that is the physical vital mental psychical and spiritual beings like in sure when the integral education systems and many others you can find the way what professor matimaranji told about experiential learning our esteemed uh, colleague ramesh bhai he will share his ideas after this after my little uh, sharing on this so when we talk about this integral education we find the relationship between the teacher and the disciple is also integral there is no isolations nowadays you see what is happening in the advent of this uh, modern education systems we find some gaps what professor bal nehru ji mentioned about the teachers and taught relationship in somewhere he was discussing yesterday that in some cases there is a loss of the ethics and the moralities we are not in some cases it is decreasing and uh, more specifically for 99% we are giving emphasis on the development of the mental faculties but our spiritual well being our physical well being our vital health and our psychical health we are not aware about this so in this way what i feel this uh, integral learning systems what the ideas has been <coughs> mentioned in the scriptures that is one of the unique gifts of uh, india's uh, teaching and learning systems of course everywhere you will find the same uh, systems the process of teaching and learning and the much emphasis was given to experience the soul's inner journey to be united to the ultimate consciousness they have given the rishis even in the integral education they have given special emphasis for the development of the consciousness because once the consciousness is developed we are united with the uh, supreme energy so the rishi speaks about ayam atma that is the aham brahma pragyanam brahmam that is the supreme knowledge is the brahman the second concept when the supreme knowledge is realized the second concept comes i am the part of the supreme brahman that is the self realizations 
And when I realize the same thing, I also the say I also the see the same thing in all the beings. That is the Tumasi, the word that. And the third is, the fourth is the Ayamatma Brahma. I am the part of the Supreme Consciousness. So this is basically the viewpoint of India in terms of learning and teaching experiences, which has been mentioned in thousands of scriptures. And there are numerous stories, examples, and the findings. And when we talk about this Indic knowledge systems through these teacher-taught traditions, they invented many of the secrets of the universe, like Professor so Bal uh, Nehru was talking about the Indian knowledge systems and Dr. Matimaranji spoke about the sustainable development things. You see how they absorbed in the experiential way of learning. They explored the hidden powers of the nature. They told about the uh, five elements. They also invented the movement of the planets. They also spoke about yeah the plants as also the lives. They also invented how to utilize the solar fuels like the Bharadwaj's Biman Shastram speaks of uh, you can utilize the solar fuel by you know, how to uh, fly the aeroplanes. Some of the Australian scientists are there doing research. I came to know some 18 years ago. And we have also the Vedic seers through their philological analysis. They give, they give a transformation of thoughts to uh, develop into uh, these uh, languages or the consciousness like that. So when we talk about this Indic knowledge systems or the integral knowledge system, what the mother and Shurabindu has given special emphasis, that teaching is basically a process and the teacher leads that. Unless until we find a teacher who can lead us, we can proceed in the path of self-development or self-realization. For example, you see, if in a class there is a no teacher, what the, how the students will learn? For example, you take the, when we were a little kid, our mother taught us what are the, how to things. It's not about the knowledge, how to live the life in a more sustainable way. So what the Vedic Rishis, they spoke about that Matru Devo Bhava, that the mother is our first teacher. Pitru Devo Bhava, Pitru, the father is our teacher. Acharya Van Devo Bhava, the Acharya, the teacher is also the pathfinder to this. You take the example of Astavakra Rishi. Whatever he learned from the nature, from the animals, from the plants, he made everyone as the teacher in his life. It is not like those who taught in the universities or schools or colleges. From each and every element, whatever we uh, learn from others, that is also part of the teaching and learning system. But now the question comes when we talk about valuing the teacher's voices. This is more uh, important to talk about because today's theme is based on that. So we, we can see that in your tradition, we have specific examples. And if in a cross-cultural things like Professor Matimaran spoke about, in each and every communities, we will find certain innovative modules to think about, to explore, experience the soul's journey. But when we talk about the teacher's voices, valuing, it is only uh, there are much emphasis given for the development of quality education, for the development of uh, developing modules, but very often we spoke about the teachers, what are the problems they face and what are their contribution to the sustainable communities. For example, their role is basically more inclusive and effective educational systems. If the teachers are not there, nothing will happen in the classrooms. So in uh, him, the divine life, Marshi Aurobindo has also written that the supreme sastra of the Vedas, the eternal teacher, he is within our inner being and he guides us how to transform in the lives like that. So when we talk about the teacher's voice, especially for the new contract for the social education that is more inclusive and uh, more effective systems they contribute. And also there is a need for the proper recognition of the teacher's voices, what they speak of. Whether it is a kindergarten education system or the universal university education systems, it is very much essential to give a recognition of the teachers' voices. Nowadays, uh, we have made several examples when the teacher teaches in the classrooms or he provides any ideas. Many, oh, what is this? If it is a good, yeah, this is fine. If it is something bad, oh, this teacher do not know anything. So it should not be. There should be a recognition. I'm not talking about the recognition in terms of the awards, what our government or any international agency is given. My idea is to recognition of their voices what they present through our ideas, transforming the, their innovative ideas to this. This is basically 
one of the more essential factors needed for the valuing teachers' voices in the social contract education. Third thing, what we feel that the professional de developments that is basically an ongoing process, what nowadays anyway innovative models, modules, and many uh, substantial contents are being developed and that is being created by the teachers. So we should acknowledge their contribution to what they have, the modules or whatever they have given. It is basically the gifts given by the teachers. For example, you take the uh, example of the sacred Vedas. The rishis, they have given more than 20,580 mantras. And based on the Vedic scriptures, so the Vedic hymns, there were thousands of scriptures where uh, invented by the later generations. So what we talk about this uh, development of professional development, content developments, the teachers have given a special emphasis and their contribution is more effective for, for the development of these educational systems. And I can understand there is a certain development process and a phase by phase it is growing on. So this is also one of the major contributions what the teachers have given to the world. The fourth thing, uh, inclusive decision making you take, you see, Nowadays, what is happening, the teachers' roles in creating the curriculums and bringing us new ideas. So they are basically the part of the main inclusive of the decision makings. Nowadays, the modern education systems have given more inclusive. It is not one way traffic what Professor Matimaran mentioned. So they are also immensely contributing for the development of these curriculums and things. And but what's about the mental health and other activities uh, aspects of the teachers? So we are not uh, aware about that. When the teacher teaches in the classroom to some 50 or 100 students, what kind of stress, not only the classroom, but also after the classroom also, what is the um, conditions of a teacher? We do not focus on that. So when we talk about value a teacher's voices, it is not like that, whether the teacher is imparting the knowledge in 10% or 20% or 100%, but we should also have to, along with recognizing their voices in developing all these teaching learning systems, we should also focus to their well beings also, a much more emphasis also needs to be given. And uh, when we talk about this uh, teacher's contribution to value their it's basically community engagements, more specifically, they're engaging the communities, for example, um, in a school, there are uh, students from different communities representing different cultures. So it is their contribution to developing the communities and also creating a sustainable measures for the different cultures also. So when we talk about these teachers' voices, especially for the teaching and learning systems, they have immensely contributed not only to teach something, but also to give an, an atmosphere to learn, to experience, to grow. So what the what Shirobindo has mentioned that nothing can be taught actually it is the soul's inner being inner knowledge which will come out gradually, and in a spiritual point that is more substantial needs to be discussed, and uh, yeah there are many challenges also the teachers faces and we do not discuss all these things, uh, always the emphasis is is being given for the development of quality educational materials the development of teaching learning systems innovative modules. And uh, I'll tell you one example in that UGC net one question was there. If a student is failed in the exams, who is responsible for that? So the option A, B, C, D, the right answer is the teacher. I think this is not correct, actually. So it is the teacher is not responsible for the 100% of effectiveness of the student. There should be combined efforts to bring out that inner potentiality uh, within us. So the teacher is basically a guide, a pathfinder for us to show the light to the path as the Rishis in the Upanishad, they speaks of Ashatoma Sadgamaya, lead me from uh, untruth to truth. Tamashoma Jyotis Gamaya, lead me from darkness to light. Murtyorma Amritam Gamaya, lead me from death to immortality. So this is basically a tradition which has given special emphasis on this teacher to traditions. And when we talk about the teaching and learning systems, I hope much more emphasis also has to be given on the teachers and uh, recognition, especially valuing their voices that is needed so that effective teaching and learning systems can be happen. 
Uh, I have seen in many occasions when we speak something, it teaches many students, they speak together, they use the mobile technologies. So I hope in these cases, there is not an effective uh, coordination between these things. So when we talk about this global education systems, we have nowadays innovative technology, innovative models, but my appeal to this August gathering that when we talk about, discuss about such issues, we should also give importance, prioritize teachers' voices, and a new social contract is also can be established that is the need of the hour. And uh, what our esteemed vice chancellor, he mentioned that is basically teachers are the backbone of our education systems. They inspire, nurture and empower future generations. Their voices hold the key to unlocking innovative solutions to the challenges we face in education today. This is very important. I am very much thankful to the esteemed vice chancellor of Shri Walaji Vidyapit for presenting his, uh, sharing his beautiful inspirations on this occasion. So in this uh, integral education system is more emphasis has been given for the development of the students and development of the teaching and learning system. This was little I was trying to add. And as I mentioned, we have uh, our esteemed vice chancellor from Shri Walaji Vidyapit and uh, uh, Sri Prabhat Kumar Sukhlaji from uh, Ministry of Agriculture and Technology. We have Professor Dr. Ashwini Kumar Suklaji from uh, um, the college from Uttar Pradesh. So we can have a little discussion on this and uh, we can conclude. So it was a wonderful session today, listening to especially the message by the student vice chancellor and the innovative presentations by Professor Bal Nehruji and Professor Matimaranji. And uh, we will start some projects based on these outcomes. So now we can have some discussions also. We have received uh, good feedbacks from the participants. We can start uh, like uh, Roni Paul has mentioned that Happy World Teachers Day to all the respective teachers. Many, many thanks for conducting this special symposium and this special auspicious day. Uh, especially, I'm very much thankful to my PhD supervisor, respected Mati Maran, sir. So, yeah, it shows how the way you are imparting your students, sir. Thank you so much. Congratulations to you. And we have also a response from uh, um, Professor Ashwini Kumar Shuklaji. Professor Shuklaji, you can come and share your experience or any ideas uh, to this discussion, sir. Yes, uh, Professor Shuklaji. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Actually, there are a few things uh, which could be added to this uh, subject of today. Uh, United Nations, as we are aware that uh, in uh, 2021, there was there were some discussions about uh, social contract and all. <clears throat> so three phases were uh, outlined for that purpose, and uh, at the moment we are in the third phase. The first phase was that of industrialization, industrialization uh, about hundred years ago, and uh, so the motto of the education was different one from today. Then second was the neoliberalization which took place in the second half of the last century. And today the education is mainly around the human rights and so many other uh, characteristics, we can say. So, very good discussion was there. Both eminent speakers and you also compliment, uh, complimentary things uh, were added by you. So, a complete picture of today's teacher's voice was given by, the, by you. And I, I agree with that. There are so many things to be done, and for that purpose, I suggest that this type of discussions uh, should be arranged time to time. And we should take uh, those suggestions and those outcomes to the ground level. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Oh, it was a wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Ashwini Kumar Suklaji, your ideas. And definitely it will help us to more work on more dimensions. 
and uh, yeah we are regularly organizing some programs we have some seven to eight program modules and we'll definitely come up with new ideas and thank you so much for your feedback we have our esteemed vice chancellor uh, sir may i request you to kindly um, if you'd like to say something on this occasion please uh, yes, uh, we have uh, Professor Krishnanji from Pondicherry University, Department of Sanskrit, and also we have Ramesh Vardiji, Ramesh Bhai from our uh, Shirobindo Society's um, Shirobindo Bhavan from Bangalore, and they are doing a lot of experiments uh, in terms of promoting this integral education among the schools and other committees. Dr. Kripati, I just spoke to our Vice Chancellor. Yes. And uh, he is uh, engaged in another activity. So he passed on his uh, best wishes and uh, he read his messages and he says he has clearly given his vision and uh, the future perspectives. And he oh, congratulates okay. God, all those who participated today. Participated today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. I can understand he has, being the vice chancellor, he has uh, several responsibilities. I just want to read the message given by Professor Ashwin Kumar Suklaji. It is in Hindi actually. Shikshak ka dhe bacho ka charitra nirman karna tatha aise mulyo ko ropna hai jisse ki unse unke seekhne ki kshamta mein vridhi ho. Ve unme vho atma vishwas veda kare ki chhatra kalpana shil aur shrijan shil ban sake. Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam ke is kathan se shikshak ki bhumi ka spast hai और यह कभी भी कमतर नहीं होने वाली है वस्तुतः शिक्षक का कार्य केवल सीख देना नहीं है अभी तो कुछ नया और सर्व कल्याणकारी करने हेतु प्रेरित करना है इसलिए मानव सभ्यता के आरंभ से ही शिक्षक की भूमिका महत्वपूर्ण रही है और सदैव बनी रहेगी आज विश्व शिक्षक दिवस पर शिक्षक की महत्ता को रेखांकित करते हुए समस्त शिक्षकों को हार्दिक शुभकामनाएं या दिस इज रियली वन ऑफ द इनोवेटिव मैसेजेस what he mentioned about that the teacher's mm -hmm. role for creating the characters not only the building the characters of the students but also creating that uh, vishwas that uh, confidence that self confidence that is much needed for the creative expressions so thank you so much professor shukla ji to adding this content to this discussion yes if you go down it is in english also Yes, yes, yeah. He has also translated in English. The aim of teacher is to build the character of the children and to inculcate such values which will enhance their learning ability. This would inculcate in them the self-confidence so that the students can be imaginative and creative. From this statement of Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, the role of the teacher is clear and it is never going to be diminished. In fact, the job of a teacher is not only to teach, but also to inspire to do something new, something new and for the welfare of all. That is why the role of teachers has been important since the beginning of human civilization and will always remain so. So understanding the importance of teachers today, the World Teachers Day, Hattie at Greetings from all the teachers. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, we have uh, Prabhat Suklaji, he's the uh, Commissioner of Horticulture, Commissioner for Minister of Agriculture, Government of India. Prabhat Bhai, if you want to say something, oh, I think he's there. Yeah. Just once again. Uh, okay, I'll just read it, what about the observations he has given. Um, Yes, uh, optimization of resources. Uh, resources use is very important and equally important in optimization of needs to have sustainable development in all spheres of life. He has also given one suggestion that developing an ecosystem to nurture innovative in academic institutions is also very essential. One of his another opinions also, teaching should be passion, not merely a job. And uh, owing to the possession is bedrock of freedom source of motivation. He has also said his ideas that Indian traditional knowledge should be scouted, which are very rich to teach us circular economy resulting in economic sustainability. Thank you so much, Professor Prabhat Ranjan Shuklaji for your ideas. And uh, any other views? Uh, I request all of you to kindly uh, participate and say yes. Uh, Aswini is from Ujjain. Yes. We have also Professor Krishnanji from Pondicherry University Department of Sanskrit. 
sir if you are able to hear me if you want to say something on this occasion sir uh, anything we may add to this today's uh, discussion maybe professor balneru ji or uh, dr mathiran ji if anything comes to your mind to this okay i think i add uh, based on the on the discussions uh, it's very encouraging uh, uh, senior people learned people have given good suggestions and i am getting very inspired by this event uh, may i propose uh, we do a one day in depth discussion symposium if uh, if uh, all of all of you agree you know i can go ahead and get the process started for that so that this subject can be discussed in detail and some some revelations can be made out of that and made public to the society and the stakeholders so i think that will throw a good amount of uh, uh, you know uh, learning yeah this is a good idea actually so the next event we will do through whatever ideas you have given in collaboration with society and uh, pondicherry university yes, so yes. it's a unique initiative we'll continue this dialogue actually and uh, time to time also whatever outcomes comes being as i mentioned that we have also the affiliation from the ministry of science and technology that is the zero and uh, whatever ideas comes we can unite the educational community to make it more enriching and innovative yes it's a good suggestion sir we'll continue this yes dr to professor krishnan ji from department of sanskrit pondicherry university is there uh, professor krishnan ji would you want to say something yes yeah just no to problem. add add to uh, quickly i yes. think uh, as dr balaner sir had told us this is a very as we know this is a very broader uh, topic um, but it's a good start i think good good uh, to initiate something like this is uh, already a novel idea uh, on, on this topic i think this we have to uh, take it further uh, as uh, maybe in the form of like a one day sym symposia on on this topic would be also to you know consolidate and bring different stakeholders within uh, as much possible across different uh, areas on education representatives and then i think this this would provide much fruit in future uh, if we make it in a also regular basis or uh, or bringing in at least as a day conference uh, so this this is something also Uh, i think others would uh, would uh, i'm sure would they accept it and we would work on it uh, across the arbindu society and pondicherry university rigor but because i think sri balaji vidya patil uh, also certainly take this uh, topic further with dr uh, balaner very enthusiastic very i'm very impressed with this first meet itself at uh, pondicherry university <laughs> and yes i am sure we all three also are looking forward to work in a different other context also in addition to education topic good i think it's a good uh, she uh, the party and organized it uh, thank you again Yo, thank you so much professor matimaran ji yeah. actually uh, a small idea came to my mind when i started when i thought about it actually yeah on every year on 5th september we celebrate the teachers day but in a more specific when we talk about the globalized like the world teachers day so i thought let us start something on this special occasion and the theme was very interesting and i am also agree with you that we'll continue this uh, dialogue in a more comprehensive way and uh, maybe some institutional level physical programs more interactive with the students that will add some value to this and uh, yeah definitely would we'll join hand together yeah there is a question from ashwini ji from ujjain i think how can a teacher be transformed for the students yeah this is a very unique question so uh, professor balneru ji you want to say something on this 
how can a teacher be transformed for the student? Well, um, when I first took my position as a teacher, I transformed myself and looked at every student as my own child. And that gave me the inspiration to teach them what they needed to learn in their life and lead a successful life. And that is how I approach every student who comes to me. And I transformed. I hope that answers for you on that. Well, that is very innovative. <laughs> innovative answer to this question, actually. Uh, Professor Matimaranji, you want to add something here? Yeah, the word transformation itself, in my view, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's not, as I said, a uh, teaching, learning process. It's going to be a continuous two-way communication, two-way approaches for students uh, and teacher get together. It shouldn't be like only teacher transformed at one side. And I think it gets also inspiration from different perspective of the students feedback so feedback mechanism also sometimes works well with the transformation. So students as such also uh, should uh, get involved with uh, active teaching process uh, and student and, and of course teacher uh, get also much more uh, inspired by responses. And of course then teacher have to inspire the students and so on. So it's a it's a continuous loop, uh, and I think this way the whole teaching learning to teacher student both together have to be transformed. Yeah, <laughs> it is one of the, <laughs> one of the wonderful answers. Teacher and student both needs to be transformed. Yeah. I'll just add something because we talk about the views from India. When Parshuram went to uh, Bhagwan Parshuram went to meet with Lord Shiva, and uh, that uh, Lord Ganapati ji was the security forces, and and he was told that no one should be allowed to enter into Mount Kailas because Lord Shiva was doing some spiritual practices. So when Bhagwan Parshuram entered to try to enter in in the Kailas, uh, there was a fighting between uh, Lord Ganesh and the Bhagavan Parshuram ji. Lord Ganpati ji was so powerful and Lord Bhagavan Parshuram ji was not able to defeat him. And finally, <coughs> Bhagavan Parshuram thrown his uh, weapons and that teeth of uh, Lord Ganesh was broken. And he was actually in a bursha condition. So when uh, Goddess Parvati came to know this, and uh, he uh, came from the Kalash mountain and he saw that Ganesh was lying on the land. And he asked who did this. And when he, uh, all the gods and goddesses were silent, no one was able to see what happened. And when he came to know that it was Bhagavan Parshurama's business, he has done this. She told Lord Shiva, you punish this fellow because he has, what the hell he has done? <coughs> He fought with a small kid and harmed in such a way and he lost his memory like that. But Lord Shiva was not able to <clears throat> punish him and he told, Parshuram is my disciple. He's just like my son. Then how can I punish him? It was an answer from Lord Shiva's experiences. So, But Goddess Parvati was not able to agree with the vision what Lord Shiva told. A mother's voice is more important for the production of his uh, her child. She told, no, I will punish this fellow because he has done a blunder. So what I was just trying to add to Dr. Balanhiru Subramanian's ideas that a teacher considers the students as their uh, sons or the daughters. This was basically the ancient teaching and learning Gurukul systems. To There are several examples. You will find there are numerous examples in the scriptures and I hope that these, when we talk about the value educations or the value systems, we may refer to such stories because the stories add something beautiful. And uh, maybe there are numerous examples between the relationship between, of the teachers and the students. 
and I'm not blaming the modern education systems because, yeah, it's in a developing phase, new ideas are coming up. But uh, today we discussed a few examples of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. He has also mentioned that past meet with the present and it creates the future. So whatever we are today, it is the gift of our past and we have also a brighter future actually. So adding the ancient knowledge systems, the wisdoms, the practices to the modern context can also create a sustainable future for us. This was a little information I was adding to this. And uh, Professor Mathimaran, you mentioned once the teacher is transformed, he or she can transform the students. In that way, everyone will be transformed. Yes, it was a beautiful question and our esteemed panel members, they responded to this. Uh, any other questions or views to this uh, today's discussion? Okay, so we have Deep Pandeji, Assistant Professor from Raksha University. Uh, Mr. Deep Pandeji, you want to uh, uh, tell something on this occasion? Dr. Deep Narayan Pandeji. Okay, so I hope we do not have uh, uh, much questions uh, because the deliberations from the esteemed speakers, they have extensively contributed for today's session. Yeah, it was really an engaging and experience uh, discussion and we added something to the mainstream. To conclude this, there are totally 800 crores of people around the world. So there are uh, lakhs of programs today, millions of teachers and the students, they are basically celebrating the legacy of the teachers. And uh, one of the beautiful ideas which struck my mind that is valuing the teachers' voices for a new social contract that is much more needed. And through such kind of uh, dialogues and deliberations, we can find some new ideas to impart among the students and also finding some new ideas from the students to share with the teachers because it's a, it's a kind of interdisciplinary sectors. And uh, I'm very much thankful to the esteemed vice chancellor of two of the universities, Professor K. Tharin Karasiji. I have his uh, discussion today with him. He expressed his best wishes for the program and as, as well as the future outcomes. And also the Vice Chancellor of Sri Balaji Vidyapit, Dr. Vishwasji, for their ideas for implementation of the projects and programs. And also, I am very much thankful to Professor Bal Nehruji Subramanian Ji and Dr. Matimara Natarajan Ji for uh, accepting our request because it's not a request actually. Whenever we call each other, we are there because we have the official MOU. <laughs> so we have to follow the guidelines what the authorities has given to us, but interact with you in discussing some uh, research based activities is really an enriching. I also came to know and learned many things from both of you. And thanks to all the Lauren participants, those who joined for this session and spared their valuable time uh, for a tribute uh, to all the teachers, those who have inspired us those who have enriched our life, but we have a long run to go actually. It's not the end, whatever we have learned. So I was inspired by one of the sentences when I was a student that make the path less traveled and the world will follow you. So the leaders, like the teachers, the leaders, those who have shown the path to us, they have created, invented their paths and we are following the paths to perfection. I can understand that uh, in such a condition we are living on the earth, the human beings not conscious about the animals, the plants, and Professor Matimaranj is bringing a beautiful project on the sustainable one health. What the disaster conditions we have created on the earth, where we have forgotten the value of life, the emotions, or the values of the respect for others, the human beings. So there is a need for the peace and sustainability on the earth. And that is the basic thing which we everyone needs to learn. And thanks to the millions of teachers around the world, those who are doing these noble services, 
to find the inner potentiality and to transfer the transformation and to co contribute more positive positivity for the sustainability. So this was the thing which I learned from this today's session. It was highly enriching and we will continue this initiative. And uh, I also request all the faculty members, those who have joined from respective universities, if you have any specific idea, if you can, if like every one of you have your students, we can have it in a collaborative events in, in collaboration between Sri Aurobindo Society, Pondicherry University, and one of the uh, innovative universities, Sri Balaji Vidyapit. So we can have some discussions. Whenever you feel the time is good and we can do something, always we, our aspiration will be open for these initiatives. And uh, with these words and salutations to all the teachers, I would like to conclude with one uh, mantra from the uh, Rigved, it says, Om idam namaha rishibhya purva jebhya purvebhya pathigdribhya. The Rishi speaks about the teachers from whom they learned. Then the tradition says, Rishi is the gods and the descendants. They discovered the, the real, the divine knowledge and they imparted this knowledge to the entire the humanity to learn, grow, and experience and to enrich. So when we talk about an integral consciousness, the unification of the physical, vital, mental, psychical, and spiritual well-being, not only of the human beings. What Sri Ramadha mentions, man is basically a thinking animal, but we consider ourselves as the most superior beings on the earth. And the humans have created a devastation, destroying the nature, killing the animals. When we kill an animal and uh, when we caught a tree, we don't ask what the souls, the tree or the animals it aspires for. So in many cases, the trees, the plants and the animals have taught many things to the human beings. There are numerous examples in the Sanskrit and Indian and all the scriptures. So in a sustainable way, this integral knowledge systems and this holistic practices, because <clears throat> the mother says, one drop of practice is better than an ocean of theories, advices, and good resolutions. So in terms of the integral knowledge systems, a little bit holistic practice is needed to respect each other and to pay a tribute to our teachers. That is basically the need of the hours. So in that way, we will be able to know uh, much, much uh, learning experience to enrich our lives. With these words, we will meet again. And our paths will cross again sometimes and will contribute to the whatever development phase is going, that is basically the evolution of humanity. So with this, uh, we'd like to say uh, namaste to all of you and we'll meet again. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.